to IGN Live at E3 2013. I'm Naomi Kyle, and for the next three days, we're going to be streaming exclusive game demos and interviews. Up now, we have a brand new Tom Clancy game that surprised everyone yesterday. It's time for The Division. Thank you, Naomi. I'm joined by Ryan and Nicholas, who are going to tell us more about Tom Clancy's The Division. Big reveal at the Ubisoft conference yesterday. Yes. Let's, let's dive a little deeper into it now. What, what's The Division all about? Okay, so it's a new Tom Clancy game, and it's, a, it's an online open-world RPG game where you can run around in a huge uh, New York uh, city and explore and have fun with, together with your friends. And also, we're melding that together with RPG mechanics, so leveling up and doing all those really cool stuff, finding new gear and, and stuff. But we're setting it in a context which is we call Fragility of Society. It's basically, in our game, a deadly virus has been spreading through New York City uh, striking people so they can't go to work and our context is about what happens when half of New York are homesick, ill, can't drive food to the grocery stores and everything is collapsing around you. So that's the, that's the con context we're in. It's the mid-crisis scenario. I see. I th yeah, during the conference, with, during this trailer, you say what the flu virus can live on uh, a, a banknote for 30 days or something? 17, 17 days. 17 days. Yeah. I, I burned all my, the cash in my <laughs> Yeah, use pockets. credit cards, that's better. Yeah, it was bad. So the pandemic has hit, and then the game picks up how long after that? It's about, it's about three weeks okay. after that. So when you start the game, uh, we wanted to have uh, a little bit of time so that uh, uh, things could really start to crumble around the city. So Because uh, in an open world game, of course, you want to have activities that you can uh, do when you're out in New York. So in this time, factions have kind of risen up in different areas around the city. Uh, uh, like in the demo that we saw yesterday, the police station has gone critical, so emergent content will be an important part of, of kind of uh, how the players choose what they'll do while they're out in New York, uh, uh, basically fixing New York. I see. Who is the player? Who, who do we play as? Uh, you play as uh, the division agents, and they are uh, the classified, you know, uh, self-supporting tactical agents. Which basically means when they get activated, you know, the world is on the brink of collapse. And they have their go bag, and in this they have, you know, supplies for 72 hours, some weapons, they have their, share, their, their watch and, and all those things that you saw the UI was connected to. That's how they communicate all the, the, the agents. So you're uh, running around in the world exploring with, with these guys, but you're also making sure, you know, you're saving what is, what is remaining. Which means that once you, you know, secure the police station and those things, the, the factions there can start, you know, rec retaking this, that part of the city. You can restore power, you, you know, clean water and doing all those kind of things, you know, to make sure that the, the city goes back to life again. Is there an end game? If you mean end games such as in MMOs and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, retention is important for us. So the way we're building the game and the, uh, the, the major systems for the game is we want the, the gameplay to be potentially limitless. So we are a persistent RPG, so there will be uh, a maximum level for the game. But uh, having activities and uh, things you can do once you've reached that is important. So yes, we will have an end game for, for the video. How many players does it support? Uh, well, a full group for us right now is uh, four players plus a companion drone. Right. So that's, uh, uh, that's what you'll be playing with if you are out in the open world in New York. But there's areas th uh, throughout the game where you can run into tons of different players. Um, I, I think you've described it as a light shooter? No, it's, it's really an RPG. So what we're doing is we're fusing uh, uh, Clancy by creating this new unit that CC was talking about. So we have core, core traditional Clancy stuff like uh, tactical combat, uh, technology is important, uh, creating a core unit with, the, def with the, uh, the division itself, and then we're wrapping that in an RPG package. So every, all, all of the mechanics and game systems are, uh, are about persistence uh, and progression and character empowerment. So this gameplay demo that we're seeing here, where would this take place in, in, a, in a, a player's game? This is Brooklyn. So we kind of wanted to get with the gameplay demo, we're setting up the, the world a little bit, right, with the, with the demo. So you start out thinking, here, the Christmas music, uh, everything is, uh, everything's all right, and then something is wrong. Sure. And you really start to see that, OK, uh, you know, we have, we have uh, elements of basically the breakdown of New York. Garbage is everywhere. Cars are not working. There are, uh, you know, we have a grocery store that's looted out. And that kind of uh, intros the, the player. Uh, here for the for this section. So we're in Brooklyn uh, for this for this uh, area of the game, and 
<clears throat> right now we're already grouped with uh, two players actually, with, uh, with Bronson who's gonna come out of the grocery store, which uh, he was checking for some supplies, and then the tablet player who right now is AFK because they're lazy. And uh, so this is an example of how the emergent content will work. So rather than uh, guiding you through levels or going through acts, there will be uh, areas around New York where things are, are happening with, without player intervention. So we see here that the police station is in trouble. It's going critical. So we want to go check that out and see what's happening. It looks great. Like it looks beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's the team I mean, has been working really, really hard the last couple of months to just you know get the, everything to look as great as possible. They have been you know really working yeah. so hard, and it looks and, and really blown away with, by with, it. With, with the next gen games and especially open world uh, persistent games, being able to be to immerse the player in New York is kind of the the most important element. So being able to push it to this type of fidelity uh, uh, is is it's, it's important for us. So. So this is an example of where they actually come across an event that, uh, which would be uh, group content, but since they've already got uh, the, the police station to take care of, they decide to keep, to keep going and, and, and ignore this for now and come back to it later. I think a moment ago we were, we were scanning some passers-by. Yes. So, so uh, part of your equipment as a division agent is you, uh, you have your smart watch, which is a lot of your interface with your talents and, and uh, skills and, the, and the, the map itself but also you have a, a contact lens, which is kind of like our UI, and that will pick up elements in the world and, and relay information to you as, a, uh, as an agent. So here we do a pulse, which is one of the skills uh, that you have where you can kind of uh, get more information about the area. We see that there's something inside the police station. We get it some heat tracers. And uh, since Megan is now joined up with us, she's got some support skills loaded. So she tells uh, uh, Nicholas, CC in this case, that he can go ahead and switch up his skills because he doesn't have to worry about keeping himself up in the fight. Um, and that's kind of how our, our class synergies will work. So you're, it, there's kind of two layers to it. You have a synergy within the weapon itself and the skills you choose to load, which if you can see here, there's two. But as soon as you start to group with more players, you get the option to change up the skills you have and it gives you a, a, a more options, basically. So it's kind of an additive synergy system. And and one thing we're going to see now, uh, really quick here, is that soon uh, the tablet gamer is, is AFK now, and now he came back. Yeah. So that's our companion gaming, something we are really proud of. And as soon as we knew that we were going to do the game for the next generation of consoles, we sat down and tried to figure out, okay, what can we do with the tablet gaming that's going to revolutionize and make sure you know we're doing something really, really cool. So what we're doing now is that you can interact in real time with the tablet and the HD game. So in the tablet gaming, you're seeing it from a bird's eyes perspective of the battlefield, and you can tag enemies, and you can debuff them, and even shoot at them with the drone you're having. But you can also buff your friends and heal them, and you know call out you know the tactical information and all those things. So we're really excited about that, and we think it's it's going to be really cool with people to interact with the HD game in real time. And also, you don't have to do that sitting at the coach. Uh, in your coach at home, uh, you can be on the bus as soon as you have an internet connection or at work or whatever and play the game with HD gamers in real time. How do you, how do you locate the game from your tablet? Is it through Uplay? The, well, that, there's still some stuff uh, that we are, we're not uh, kind of talking about yet on how okay. that'll work and that's one of them, but okay. uh, you'll log in like a player and you'll be able to join the matchmaking system and you'll get added to a group uh, uh, seamlessly, basically. Yep. Yep. Uh, so we made it into the police station here. Yes. So you know, uh, you know, everything you come across in the world is going to be important. So obviously, contraband, water bottles, food, uh, ammunition uh, will be important. So here, that you see the players, they pick up some extra food, which are consumable buffs in the game. This is uh, again the UI kind of getting some updated map information that would would go to your smartwatch. We've now secured the police station, which was going critical. So we get some experience and a reward for doing that. And they also give us a code to the armory, the, the, the goodie room, you know. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead back and check that out. And this is kind of to take a look at the Snowdrop, our, our in-house our in engine that we're creating specifically for the division. And we, uh, it's a really good demonstration of our dynamic G uh, lighting, the okay. global illumination that we have. So now we've, now we've entered the, uh, the, the goodie room itself. And CC here gets an, get some gets really an upgraded good weapon. weapon. And what's interesting here now uh, is that 
to, to protect this weapon, I don't lose this weapon, we need to uh, extract. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're like uh, we're running out from the building and are scared that you know other players is gonna come and interact with us and maybe take the, the incredibly cool weapon we got. So we're gonna do an extraction and Megan is gonna shoot the flare up in the air and then a timer starts. And when you, as soon as you do the extraction, here we go, uh, a timer starts and now we are pinged on the map so everyone knows we're doing an extraction. People will come here and they will try to, you know, stop us from doing the extraction and maybe These take are other, other players. Yeah, there's other players, yeah, and they will stop, try to stop us. And if they succeed, they can take the the weapon I found, for example. So it, there, it, there's loot drops. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yes. Looting is a big part of the game and something nice. we really want to, you know, push players to to continue so, going for. Yes. So we we uh, we have a long communication cycle for yeah. with you guys, but. Uh, uh, we really want to make PvP and how we handle PvP in the division a part of the core experience. So we're not going to separate it out into multiplayer maps. There'll be areas with, out in New York where you can engage in PvP and possibly uh, 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 lose some equipment that you may have attained in that area. Nice. So, uh, uh, so what's, what's the timeline here? When will we get to play the division? We're, uh, the game is coming out 2014. That's uh, what yes. we're aiming for right now. Oh, 2014. 2014. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, to you guys. The, the game's looking really, very cool. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you Good time. to be here. This is Tom Clancy's The Division. Back to you, Naomi. Yes, I'm back from a short break. That game, I'm just in absolute awe over it. All right, as for our audience out there, that's you guys. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook or follow at IGN on the Twitters if you want even more content to salt your eyeballs. Trust me, it's actually a lot better than it sounds. Okay, we just saw one Ubisoft game, but there's more where that came from. Next up, it's time to unleash your inner pirate. Assassin's Creed Black Flag is next.